So, who calls themselves furries? <laughs> 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 so, who are these people that we can... Also, if you're raising your hand, I can't see you. Yell. And then I'll ignore you. <laughs> Alright, so first of all, age. What is the age of these people who call themselves furries? Well, as you can see here, this is 18, this is 60, uh... Natural selection. Ten thousand furries. This isn't ten. This isn't ten thousand furries. This is based on about five or six thousand furries. <laughs> yeah, some weird little thing wrong. Um, yeah, so what we find is that more than half the fandom, and, and it is more than half because we're ethically not allowed to use minors in our research, so we're cutting off a whole bunch of people who are 17, 16, 15, 14. So more than half of the fandom is 21 years old or younger. Uh, that said, uh, we still find that over the age of 30, we do find uh, approximately 9 to 10% of the fandom is third, uh, 30 or over. Uh, the term gray muzzles. Recently we started asking people, do you consider yourself a gray muzzle? Yes. yes. Uh, yes. Because a lot of people <laughs> sort of throw this term around. No one seems to be able to agree on what a gray mu what, where the cutoff is for gray muzzle. Uh, we found that on average, the average person who called themselves a gray muzzle was 42.8 years old. And it constituted <laughs> about 9.2% of the fandom. So, uh, a little bit more about these gray muzzles. That's their average age. It's a phone. It's a phone. Cell phone. Cell phone. Cell phone. You just turn it off if you're not using it. Thank you. Furries are your own IT crowd. I love it. Thank goodness for people who know how to use GoPros. So, among these people who called themselves gray muzzles, we had people as old as 70 years old calling them gray muzzles. We had some other people who called themselves gray muzzles at the age of 20. <laughs> I suspect these are people who do not know what the term gray muzzle means. I but have a gray nose. They have a line. <laughs> uh, we do find that on average, uh, gray muzzles say that they have had furry interest for about 21.8 years. This is up from the average furry who says that they've had furry interest for about 10 years. Uh, they've been in the fandom for considerably longer than the average furry has, 12.3 years versus 6.2 years. Uh, and interestingly, we found that it took them a lot longer to find the fandom than, yeah, than sort of uh, younger furries did. So for younger furries, they say that there's about 4.6 years between the time they started having these strange furry interests and the time they actually found the furry fandom and said, yeah, this is, this is where I belong. Um, Grey Mouse, it took them almost 10 years. We didn't yes. have the internet! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey! hey. Yeah. Stealing my points. <laughs> you stole his point. They didn't have the internet. Thank you. You're all awake still. This is F O L. <laughs> Hurry online. <laughs> uh, we also find that Grey Mouse are much more likely to be Therians. Meaning? <laughs> that really upset someone. Someone yelled shit over there. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Just to clarify. Yeah. So yeah, uh, three to four times more likely to be a Therian if you consider yourself a gray muzzle. So, biological sex in the fandom. I'm very thankful, by the way. I gave this talk a few months ago, and I'm very thankful to a transgender furry who pointed out to me uh, that in all of my data, I constantly reported males and females, but I did not report transgendered individuals. Uh, so I'm being very careful this time to make sure that I, I'm not neglecting that we do collect this data. Uh, and that was, a, that was a complete oversight on my part, so my apologies to anyone in my past uh, talks who I've offended with that. We do find that the fandom is primarily male. 83.7% of the fandom is male. Uh, we do find about 13% are female. And then we find another 2.5% or so identify themselves as transgender. And then .8% uh, identified as something else. Uh, it was open-ended, so we let them sort of write in whatever they wanted. Um, we did find um, that this, this difference between males and females, this approximately 83-84% male, is very consistent across our samples. We've looked at this uh, more than 10 times now, and it's almost consistently primarily male. You had a hand up, I think? I was waving at someone. 
Now, now I see his hat. Now that I, <laughs> I had no idea. I'm trying to figure out what Therian was. Oh, okay, I will get to that. Okay. My apologies. We will talk about Therians. Yeah. This is this, this talk is intended to be, regardless of your 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 level of knowledge about furries. So. Uh, interestingly, the prevalence of transgender individuals in the furry fandom is between 18 and 100 times more prevalent than the general population. Now that's big. Wow. Yeah. That is massive. So, yes, this, uh, there's a lot of reasons why this may be the case, but suggests, you know, depending on whichever reason you're using, the fact remains that there are many more transgenders in this fandom than there are in the general population. Uh, the furry fandom is predominantly white, about 83% white, but we do find a mix of other uh, ethnic racial groups within there. Uh, location of our samples. So our surveys are all in English because I only know one language. And you, you sort of know like, the swear words in Afrikaner, That's but that true. doesn't help us. What's that young plank on Frankfurter? <laughs> yes, I would like a Frankfurter. Bugger off, you shit eater. <laughs> Have you considered releasing a Canadian version? Pardon me? We are actually currently in the process, uh, I, I joke, I joke, we're actually in the process right now of translating some of our surveys into Japanese uh, because we have contacts at a Japanese kimono, which is sort of like the Japanese equivalent of furry, uh, convention where they're hoping to, to sort of collect some data over there and see how comparable the fandom is. Yeah, so we've, uh, I've got contacts at the university as well. We've actually been working on cross-cultural studies. They've got a leg up on some of this stuff. So yeah. I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, I, I thought Japan had a higher number than what, what you're representing up here. Uh, so again, this is because we're using only an English survey so far. So, that, you know, uh, the fact that we're using English probably stops a lot of Japanese furries from taking our survey. It also explains the racial demographics. Yeah. Yeah. So, given that, keeping that in mind, so bearing that in mind, we do find that the majority of furries in our samples come from the United States, uh, Canada, Europe, and then various other countries. We found furries on six out of seven continents. There are no Antarctica furries that we know of. Aww. Maybe two, maybe two lonely penguins or something. something. <laughs> uh, within the USA, uh, we tried to break it down into sort of subcomponents, and it's kind of an even mix. So furries kind of come from all over the United States. Biggest <laughs> chunk. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, within Europe, we tend to find again, you know, predominantly English-speaking countries. Uh, but that said, you know, Germany, Britain, Northern Europe, sort of a conglomerate of Northern European countries. Um, not surprising if you know that Germany does have a surprisingly large contingent of furries. Uh, so, so far, when we talked about furries, the average furry is an 18 to 25 year old white American male. Well, yeah. are we right? Well, let's see. Here's some pictures no. of actual furry, you know, furry gatherings. Hang on, did you? Did you break down Canada? Yeah, it's, it's a pretty even split between uh, Western, Central, and Eastern. I actually have that data I didn't put here because I thought I'd be the only Canadian here. Wow. Um, Canadian. So, yeah, so here, here's some actual furry. <laughs> so, so, pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're pretty close so far in a demographic sort of assessment of the fandom. Some other just random facts about furries. Uh, the average furry makes about thirty-one thousand nine hundred dollars a year. Really? Uh, who skews the average that much? <laughs> now, okay, new guy. You know, we take in the gray muggles versus the younger ones. Is, is that? How you average it out? I'm sure. We, do, we take all of them and, and just av take the average of everyone. So we haven't looked at the. Oh, so we're pulling the weight then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, okay. yeah, no, it it was uh, I did and I don't remember yeah. off the top of my head. I got a good job, my Apologies. It's not too far yeah. off though. It's actually pretty. Yeah. Now the reason this is sort of the way it is because a lot of furries <laughs> have some form of post-secondary <laughs> education. Not all, of course, <laughs> but on average, the average furry, statistically speaking, has at least some post-secondary education tending to be in the hard sciences, computer, IT, 
graphic arts, that sort of thing. Porn. Can't forget the mechanics. <laughs> yeah. They're the hard average. average. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> <laughs> so, some furry had asked a, a furry had asked at one convention whether or not it was the case that furries came from broken homes or divorced homes. You find that one third of furries have parents who divorced. Uh, this does not differ statistically significantly from the general population. So it's not the case that furries came from divorced homes. Uh, quirky enough, we find that furries are much more likely to be the oldest child. Uh, nope, I'm so, the oldest. So in, in two, in two oldest. children families, they're more likely to be the oldest sibling of the three. Uh, in three sibling families, they're still much more likely to be the oldest sibling as well. I'm the youngest. Pardon me? So I'm the youngest. So am I. On average. <laughs> there, there is one furry out there who, who, who is the youngest child, therefore our numbers are completely wrong. <laughs> we find we find that 3.8% of furries do have children. That's scary. This <laughs> They multiply! <laughs> They're practicing the time tables! How big, how big are their <laughs> letters? <laughs> so we're working, we're working right now. We'd like to ask questions about things yeah. like, um, are, are you are you going to sort of, when you have children, are you willing to, to bring them into furry as well? The problem is, again, because the number's really low, um, it's, you know, we're talking about a subgroup of a subgroup of a subgroup. It becomes kind of difficult, but in future research, we're actually hoping, somebody made the suggestion, when you when you have kids, are you planning to bring them up in furry? So, we'll see. Give me six months and we'll, we'll, we'll do the data on that. <laughs> yes? Is that couples that are furries or just singles? <laughs> uh, of furries in general. Uh, in yeah. Yeah, of, of collective furries. There's a lot of single furries. We'll see that later. Okay. So, uh, pets. How many furries own pets? You find that actually furries are much more likely I have zero uh, to say that they have... <laughs> His name is Bob. <laughs> this, is, this is currently. Furries currently right now. Um, more furries own no once. pets than own, uh, you know, one pet or two. They're, they're, they're the majority. Um, oh, no. That's Candy and Lenny. Like, yeah, right. And we're skewing this right here. Yeah, 60. <laughs> also, things like goldfish, you know, this person says, I have, you know, 150 fish. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I didn't have two right. dogs, so, no. so other statistics that I thought furries might find interesting. Uh, yeah, do no, furries live in their parents. parents' basement? Probably. <laughs> 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 Remember the age group. Remember the age group. So we actually split it up into the older half of furries and the younger half of furries. Thank you. And if you look Thank at the blue bars, these are the younger furries. If you look at the red bars, that goes down. <laughs> <laughs> Furries are relatively young. Most right. <laughs> and a bad economy and society and Anuka, are you living with your parents? My girlfriend left me. Just in uh, <laughs> just in, in terms of uh, in terms of Canadian data, those between the ages of twenty five and thirty who are not married, you still have and not in school, about a quarter of them still live at home as well. So wow. it's uh, you know that's not that far off other other, other data. Yeah. Now is so, that is that just uh, I'm sorry. No no worse. Go ahead. Uh, you know, typically I guess in Europe it's more common to live with your parents, you know, in a you know, in a house as opposed to America where you move out. Yeah. Are, are the numbers once again just all put together or uh, all different? put together? I never thought about that, but that's actually a really good idea. Um, I'll look at that. That's actually not a bad idea. Thank you. Thank you. American yeah. culture can kick our kids to uh, <laughs> so, In terms of working, uh, we find that furries do tend to have either either be working full time, part time, or have some kind of education. That said, there are furries who are unemployed and looking for jobs. Again, tough economic times. About one fifth of furries are currently uh, unemployed and looking, and there are a number of furries who are disabled or retired or for whatever reason um, are not currently working, have a legitimate reason to not be working. Uh, we looked at political orientation for furries. So very conservative is on the left. <laughs> <laughs> And, and we used to just ask, are you liberal or conservative, until someone pointed out that economic liberalism and conservative and uh, you know, socially liberal and conservative are two different things. 
furries are actually more likely uh, to be economically sort of, they're economically more conservative, socially more liberal. This kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. Socially more liberal. So, Democrats. <laughs> no, 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 not to say. Not necessarily. Libertarian here. That'd be libertarian. Yeah. Happy libertarian. But again, I'll point out that uh, you know, it's a nice smooth curve. Anymore. It's actually a pretty good distribution. Uh, but there's a nice big spike right there for, for very social liberal. And this makes sense. These are things like. I'm concerned for transgender issues, concerned for gay marriage, you know, these are things that kind of affect the furry fandom. Come to Canada, we'll take you. I've <laughs> <laughs> been married well, there for like over 10 years. Just so. <laughs> wow. uh, we asked furries about their... We asked uh, furries about their religious orientation, and we find that about, consistently, we find out half of furries consider themselves to be atheists. Uh, atheists or agnostic. Uh, yeah, atheist, and depending on the sample, it's about 20, about 50% are atheist or agnostic. The specific percentages kind of differ, but about half are atheist agnostic. About 25% are Christian. Yeah! And 25% are whatever the hell they put on the page. I want to know who put satanic there! We've learned, we've learned from experience it's a bad idea to give furries a blank. That explains the other. We find in general, so even among the, 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 the particularly religious, uh, like the first who identify as Christian, in general they tend to they say on average they're not particularly religious, uh, but they're more likely to be spiritual, they consider themselves spiritual but not necessarily religious. So I, I, I have faith, I, I, I sort of believe, but I don't necessarily go to church. I don't necessarily, you know, adhere to a lot of the... the the sort of social obligations of a religion. The holy water burns. Gay <laughs> monster. <laughs> the power of Christ compels you. <laughs> so, uh, we find that in general, the average furry says that they've been a furry for you know seven or eight years. Uh, the average furry says that they sort of decided to call themselves a furry at the age of sixteen or seventeen and found the community about one to two years later on average. It, it kind of depends. 